Revolution from Above is a 1973 essay by Julius Evola that can be found in Artos Media's A Handbook for Right-Wing Youth. In it, Evola explains why a revolution from above is needed, what distinguishes it from revolutions from below, and who the types of people are that are capable of carrying out this action. Evola begins the essay by stating that one of the general features of the end times is subversion, which he defines as the exercising of an urge, drive, and action towards radical change from below, and for the sake of what is below, upon existing social and cultural structures. At the time of the essay's writing, the existing social and cultural structures within society included vain bourgeois materialism, capitalism, and a hollowed-out form of Christianity. Evola was known to write against all three of these things from a traditionalist perspective. So why then, you may ask, does Evola believe that the attempt to tear them down represents subversion? The answer lies in how a revolution against these social and cultural structures is carried out. To quote Evola, the revolt against all these features of a society presenting so many problematic aspects may seem legitimate. But what distinguishes the final times is the lack of any rectifying, liberating, or restoring action from above. The fact that the often necessary initiative and action towards radical change is allowed to be carried out from below. From below, that is, in terms of both social strata and lower values. The almost inevitable consequence of this is the shifting of the center of gravity to a level that is even further down than that of the structures which have entered into crisis and lost their vital content. From the vantage point of 2024, it is difficult to say that Evola is wrong. The left has subverted the bourgeois order, capitalism, and even mainline Christian churches all in the name of the lowest strata of society. So what does Evola recommend instead? The revolution from above that Evola wishes to see involves taking action against the current order in the name of higher transcendent values instead of leveling egalitarian ones. In other words, the revolution from above will be done in the name of a principle of authority, sovereignty, and inequality rather than the pseudo-humanism of the leftist doctrine of social justice. The historical example which Evola uses to illustrate revolution from above is Otto von Bismarck's transformation of disunified German states into the German Empire. Fascinatingly, Evola actually gets the term revolution from above from Bismarck, who is quoted as having said, the only revolution we know is the revolution from above. A footnote on page 46 elaborates that when Bismarck and the Prussian aristocracy instituted socialist reforms in Germany, Rather than the reforms taking place as a result of political action taken by the lower classes and done out of resentment, Bismarck implemented them from above, the principle of authority, and on behalf of the German nation rather than the proletariat. In this way, Prussian socialism differed greatly from Marxism, with the former being implemented for the betterment of the German nation, and the latter being the hideous subversion of the German nation. Today, of course, the word socialism is synonymous with leftist ideology of subversive Jews like Marx and Trotsky, and the left Hegelians. But this was not always the case, and had the war gone differently, had the National Socialists not been defeated, then it very likely would not be the case today. But I digress, and this is a tale for another time. Returning now to the essay, Evola spends the entirety of page 47 chastising the right for being too sympathetic to the pseudo-humanism of the left and arguing on their terms rather than basing themselves on principles of hierarchy, authority, and sovereignty. This critique of the 1973 right is particularly interesting when we compare the state of things then to how it is today. In Evola's day, the situation was undoubtedly bleaker with regards to this specific problem. Here, I would like to offer a white pill. As of recently, especially after 2020, more and more people are opposing the left on explicitly ethnocentric terms and flatly rejecting left-wing priors. Moreover, the people who do this on the contemporary right are the hearth of new ideas. They are exciting, whereas the mainstream conservatives are stale and boring. As America moves into the next decade and a new generation of youngsters grow up with open access to non-regime sources, I predict that this trend will continue. The final page of the essay consists of Evola reiterating his critiques against psychoanalysis and to a lesser extent, existentialism and what we would call New Age spiritualism. I have addressed these critiques in previous videos in our A Handbook for Right-Wing Youth series, and in much greater detail. 
Evola ends his essay on a dismal note, pointing out that in 1973 on the right, there existed, quote, the almost complete absence today of anyone capable of standing his ground and acting not from below, but from above, in all domains. Had Evola been alive today to witness the masses of broccoli-haired Zoomers and their even worse off Generation Alpha counterparts, one can imagine how he would react. Although he would lament that his statement is still true to this day, I urge whoever may be listening to this to take Evola's quote not as an indictment, but rather as a call to action. Just because we are the children of winter who do not measure up to the heroism that was exemplified by the Axis soldiers, this does not excuse us from the mission to better ourselves. Therefore, I bid whoever is watching to interpret Evola's statement as a call to action and an order to raise oneself up for the good of our people.